Um, since uh, going from larger venues to the smaller, more intimate club setting, how has that been for you? We like it. You know, I like playing clubs. It's uh, easier it's to meet the, the it, fans. Well, it's the way we began. You know, it's uh, pardon the expression, back to your roots. You know, we started out playing bars and actually, I started out uh, playing fraternity parties and teen discos and whatever it took to get paid um, in the late 60s and then uh, on from there you know to Blue Oyster Cult where we played just in front of anybody we could to uh, to get our new material out and just to feed ourselves we had to play clubs on Long Island uh, we had to learn other people's material otherwise we wouldn't get hired doing original material so we used to slip originals in the set of you know, the grassroots or whatever, you know, anybody's songs we were doing, and the Rolling Stones and Beatles, and we used to, uh, we all came from bar band backgrounds of doing other people's songs, so we, we all knew all the same songs, so you know, we did Born to be Wild and Street Fighting Man and, you know, things like that, and then every once in a while we'd put in an original just to see how it would work, but we wouldn't say it was original because we'd get fired, and we got fired more than got hired, we got fired, uh, we were hired for Friday, Saturday at a bar. We usually, Saturday night, they say, don't come back. You know. What was it like uh, playing in that, that musical era of the late 60s, early 70s, and then, you know, into the big super groups of the 70s and stuff? What was it like being uh, part of that era? Gosh, it's uh, hard to explain. It's, uh, we enjoyed it. It was, uh, I mean, we made, our first record came out in 72. Um, we did one album a year until about 1981, and along the way, 19, well, the first record came out in 72, it was the vote, we were voted the best new band uh, in America by the uh, Reader's Paula Cream magazine. Then um, <clears throat> we were opening for Alice Cooper, it was our first real tour. Actually, our first real tour was, uh, we opened for The Birds, and um, then uh, we opened for Alice Cooper, and we started headlining our own small shows. By 1974, <clears throat> when uh, Secret Treaties came out, it was a uh, third album. We were starting to headline our, more of our own shows and less going out with other bands. And 1975, uh, our first live record, On Your Feet or On Your Knees, came out. We were headlining a lot by then. Then at 76, um, Don't Fear the Reaper was a top 10 single, so uh, it was our first real exposure to real airplay, uh, other than what used to be called album, album radio, sure. which hardly exists anymore. And, uh, which is a shame. Um, I wish there was more album radio in America, so when you turn on the radio, you, hear, you don't hear just the hit, you can hear right. all the cuts from albums you like. Um, like Metallica, you know, you put, you listen to the radio, you'll hear, you know, Sandman, but you won't hear any other Metallica cuts right. hardly. I wish they played the best of puppets, that would be good. Let's hear that on the radio. Um, uh, I'm a guitar player myself, and one of the first songs I learned when I started playing in the middle 80s was Don't Fear the Reaper. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a teacher teach it to me. And, and Sting uh, stole, st I ran into Sting, and he told me that he stole the uh, the main lick from Don't Fear the Reaper for um, uh, Message in a Bottle. Oh, really? So if you think about Message in a Bottle and you hear that opening lick, that's yeah. where Sting came from. How do you feel uh, then about your music withstanding the test of time and, and people still listening to it? Because I know quite often I'll turn on a local station here and Don't Fear the Reaper will be on, Burning Reaper, for You. Reaper, Burning For You, Godzilla, the, you know, those songs get a lot of airplay and always will probably. It's just That's because classic rock has become so popular. Um, uh, this is my, you know, my own opinion. It just seems obvious to me that with the, uh, the, uh, the aging of the baby boomers, which is, you know, I'm sort of on the high end of the baby boomers and there's people you know eight nine ten years younger than me were all called baby boomers and as that bulge of population you know moves through time you know they're going to want to hear the music they grew up with sure. so that's why classic radio is so popular is that uh, age range usually find at your shows or is there no, we get more all younger kinds of different groups at our shows we get uh, you know original fans um, who I've run into people in their mid-30s who say, yeah, I was into you guys when I was in high school, but am I glad you guys are still playing? So uh, they're, you know, 12, 13, 14 years out of high school, and they're, you know, Don't Fear the Reaper was a big hit in 76, and that's when they were 18 or 17 or 16. But uh, we're getting their children, and we're getting their little brothers and sisters. We're getting a lot of people who just word of mouth say, I, I heard you guys on classic rock, which I listened to, and people who are 18, 19, they're not happy with the kind of music that's popular today, and they like the, the, the music from 10, 15 years ago, so they're coming to see us. How do you uh, describe your longevity? There's been so many bands uh, that were 
huge bands and went uh, had a great career and then just decided to call it quits. How do you uh, keep it going after, you know? Uh, uh, that's a good question. We just, we enjoy playing, you know, and the alternatives to, to playing, you know, I mean, we still make a really good living from this. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to turn down. Um, you know, we had, we've had times our ups and downs where uh, we didn't want to do it anymore. We took off nine months in 1987 and didn't play at all. Um, and that's when most of us sort of started doing little things outside of the band. Yeah, I mean, we've done very well and, and, and we really don't have to play, you know, to pay our bills. But we really like doing it and, and it's, it's, uh, it's been terrific. It's, uh, I wouldn't change a thing. Uh, one of the pioneers of uh, the hard rock genre. Um, do you often hear your band in new bands music and such? Uh, can you oh, see yeah. that? Oh yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't hear like note by note, but uh -huh. uh, you know, for instance, Axl Rose came to one of our shows in LA a couple of years ago and you know, did the I'm not worthy thing to us, you know, which was, blew me away. Um, uh, he was a big fan of ours when he was a teenager. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I run into a lot of um, uh, really big uh, hard rock bands today. I run, <laughs> I run into a lot of uh, big bands today who, um, you know, grew up listening to our stuff, and uh, we had a big influence on them. Um, any of the new bands that you see is really uh, hot and could withstand the test of time as, as you've been? Oh boy. Uh, I, I can't be uh, uh, an arbiter of taste. I can, you know, I mean, I like bands like King's X, which I think they're a great band, and I haven't really gotten over the top yet. Um, I, I, you know, I've been a Metallica fan since the first time I heard Master of Puppets. I think they're probably one of the best bands in America today. They'll probably, you know, go a long, long way even further from here because they're just getting their above ground right. reception now, years and years after they've been together. Um, I like all kinds of music, really. I mean, uh, I, I still like, uh, you know, fusion and mm -hmm. Spyrogyra, different, different kinds of music. Like well, we did a tour with Mahavishnu. Oh, it was really? kind of interesting. Yeah. That tour, tour I told you about with the birds, um, uh -huh. we were the middle band and Mahavishnu opened. Oh, really? Yeah, and this is the original Mahavishnu Orchestra with Billy Cobham and uh, John, John McLaughlin. McLaughlin. And, and uh, it's, 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 <laughs> it was a real hoot. We had, we had to open. We had to be go on after Mahavishnu Orchestra, and for your uh, listeners or viewers out there, uh, this was uh, one of the best uh, fusion jazz rock kind of bands of, of the 70s, and, and uh, they just blew us right off the stage. It was, it was very humbling because they were terrific. Okay, uh, any future recording plans going? Or? Yeah, we're, um, we just finished the soundtrack to a movie called Bad Channels. That's out in your store right now. Okay. It's out in your store right, right now. So if you go to your uh, record store, uh, there's the soundtrack of Bad Channels. I should be holding it up. The soundtrack to Bad Channels by Blue Oyster Cult. It's our first soundtrack. Of course, we've had a few songs in movies before, like uh, Veteran of the Psychic Wars is a song I wrote. It was in the soundtrack to a movie called uh, Heavy Metal, which was an animated film. Sure. Sometimes late night on HBO, you might see Heavy Metal. Uh, also, Don't Feel the Reaper was in the original Halloween. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis at her nubile best. Um, and, uh, but this is our first, we did the whole movie, the whole soundtrack, which was uh, kind of neat. It was a, kind of a challenge. It's uh, an inexpensive, uh, small C cult film with, the, uh, with uh, Martha Quinn of MTV as the female lead of this cheap horror movie. Um, and uh, not the world's greatest video, but the, the music's terrific. Okay. Uh, hey, just in closing, any words to uh, any BOC fans? Yeah, we have a new album that'll be out in the springtime. So um, the first new complete Blue Oyster Cult album in uh, since '88, since Imaginos, um, and uh, we uh, we finally got off of CBS. So we're going to be on a new label and have a new record. And uh, look for it. Anyone, uh, of course, who's seeing this, uh, you know, missed our show tonight because you're watching television. But uh, if you want to come out and see us, we're playing a lot of new songs. Probably one third of the show is new material from that movie or from the next record. And, uh, you know, here we are in the mid-90s, having started in the 60s. It's kind of shocking, but uh, we, we're still having fun.